While you're still standing, let's look at scripture really quickly. Mark chapter 10 is where we're going to spend some time on today. As you turn there, let me just say congratulations to all of these graduates and those who are going to the, the next tier in their education or in their life or whatever God may have for you next. I think this is good that you all celebrate this and I'm actually encouraged that you all do this. Unfortunately, there's not enough congregations that are still celebrating like this. And I just think it's important uh, because when the church doesn't celebrate your accomplishments, you go to where the places that do celebrate your accomplishments. And those places don't always have your best interests in mind. So I'm just so grateful that you all are still doing this as a congregation. Mark chapter 10, I'm going to start reading verse 17. I'm going to read several verses. I'm not going to, we're not going to cover all these, but I just think, I think it's good to read scripture. <laughs> so I'm going to read several verses just really quickly. Starting in verse 17, I'm using a new international version. It says, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal, eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You should not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not give false testimony. You should not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. I'm good. <laughs> Verse 21 says Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. <laughs> verse, 22, verse 22 says, at this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Do me a favor. Skip down to, the, to, to verse 35. Skip down to verse 35. Still Mark chapter 10, verse 35 it says, then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him and said, teacher, they said, everyone's calling Jesus teacher. We want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? They said we can. They answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those from whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Verse 43 says, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great, everyone say great, great. among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You may return to your seats today. I want to just kind of talk from this topic. Greatness. 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 I'm so grateful I, 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 that I get to be connected to two individuals that I believe are great uh, in my life. Uh, one is your pastor, Perrin Rogers. I think he is an example of greatness. And I really do believe that. <laughs> you know, when people are moved by seeing other people bless, that's a sign of greatness. That's who you are, man. I appreciate that. You, you bless me on today. And I also get to uh, be connected to his dad as well, 
I wouldn't be doing none of this if it wasn't for him. So I don't know if I should thank him or, or send him a bill. But nonetheless, I'm so blessed by you, Pastor T.L. Rogers. And just it's an honor to see you and to be here. And I honor both of you all's wives because you all have chosen right. <laughs> and uh, I know that they are the will behind the will that's keeping you all moving next to the Lord. So uh, I just I'm, I'm thankful that I get to see greatness in both of you. And I want to talk about this idea of greatness, because in our culture, especially on a day like today, where we're all looking forward to what the future will bring, not only the students that have been promote it to the next level in their academic careers, but those of us in life too are just looking for what the future can bring. You know, Now that we're out of this unique season in history of COVID, we're trying to get back to work and get back to things. I'm grateful that you all are coming back to this fellowship because uh, you know everything else is opening back up and people have no problem being everywhere else. Movie theaters are packed again and concerts are packed again. It's good to see that the church is becoming packed again too. Yeah. So and I'm so grateful for those of you who are watching online and who are participating in this as well, because we use online for everything. We ordering groceries online now and ordering food online now and everything else. So why not connect with the Lord online? But I think we have confused greatness in our culture today. We got the, we got the idea of greatness twisted. Because I remember graduating and going to the next thing, and I wanted to be great. And in my mind, greatness was about how many more people I can get to follow me on social media. So in my mind, I confused greatness with popularity. Two separate things. It's a lot of people who are known but aren't great. Then, you know, I kind of went from wanting to be known by people to saying, you know what, when I graduate and I get my job and I start working, I'm the first thing I'm going to buy is that car. I've been looking at that car for years as soon as I get that. I was getting greatness confused with status. Because the car meant I, I reached a certain level. It was status. Then, you know, I started working that job. And I got tired of being the, 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 at the bottom of the totem pole. I wanted a title next to my name. <laughs> and that's all I could achieve because I knew that as soon as I get that title, as soon as I move up, as soon as I go from being like, you know, coordinator to like manager, and I go from being manager to executive and all this stuff, I'll finally arrive and be great. But I got greatness confused. With elevation. It's different. <sighs> and then I got a chance to meet some people who had all the stuff that I wanted, right? And they had the house, and the cars, and the land, and they had all this stuff. And I said, man, one day I want, I want to be great like them. Because they had fortune. But I had it confused because greatness and fortune are two separate things. And I love moments like this because in moments like this, I get the ability to kind of go back in time and talk to my 18 year old self or my 20 year old self or my even 30 year old self, 40 year old self. <laughs> Golly. I ain't going to climb that high. I ain't going to climb that high. Not yet. Not yet. Take my time. I wonder what I would have told myself, even going through ministry, because I was a very precocious person. So I thought that was a nice way of saying that, you know, I thought I knew what I thought I knew when I really didn't know what I thought I knew type of thing. But I wish I could go back and have and redefine what greatness was, because maybe I wouldn't have pursued the things that I pursued in the way I pursued them. Because sometimes you can get on a road and think it's leading you to exactly where you want to be and you get there and still feel so empty inside. You know, this was so important for me because I hit a wall because, you know, finally I thought I had got another opportunity. And I said, now I'm the first black male on a one point one billion dollar uh, executive team. And I'm flying across the nation. I'm meeting with these people and still feel empty inside. 
because you expect that certain levels in life will get fulfill you, but that's not greatness. So I went through my own personal journey and I had to try to try to figure out, you know, what, what is greatness then? How do we define greatness? What does it mean to be great? And the good thing is I wasn't the only person that had a question like this. There is a man in Mark chapter 10 that we're looking at right now that went to Jesus and in verse 22 had the same question. Now, we look at that verse and automatically think, you know, OK, what is he says? What does it mean to inherit eternal eternal life? And so we automatically go there, you know, that he's talking about what does it mean to get to heaven? But his question was actually a lot deeper than just that. He wanted to know what does it mean to not just be great on this side of heaven, but what does it mean to be great on that side of heaven as well? Because he he already had the, the, the Bible says he had great wealth. He was probably well known. He probably had all the things he had accomplished everything. So now he's thinking about how do I accomplish the greatness that I accomplished on this side, at least what I thought was greatness on this side, on the other side. That's the question that he has here. He wants to know, how can I really be great? I don't want my greatness to end when I die on this side of, 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 of eternity. I want my greatness to continue on the next side of eternity. Because he had made it. He had made it to the top. He started from the bottom. Now he was here. Probably started from the bottom. His whole team was here. Now, you know, uh, that's an old song now. I got to update myself. But. And through this passage, Jesus not only teaches him a valuable lesson, but he gives a valuable lesson to his disciples. And just really, really quickly, really quickly, I want to just give you three words, three words that's going to help you redefine what greatness means. It's not prestige. It's not fame. It's not status. It's not it's not about the accumulation of wealth. Those things are good. They might be fun. They can even be enjoyable. But if you stop there and think that that's what makes you great. You're selling yourself a lie. Let me tell you something. The worst thing you can do in this life is convince yourself of something that's not true. It's the worst thing you can do. And I've been there. So three things, three quick things. The first of these things is found in verse 21. It says Jesus looked at him and, and, and loved him. He loved him. He said one thing you lack. He said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. He says, you want to be great? You want to be great in a place where moth or rust doesn't destroy your wealth? You want to be great? He says, go and sell everything you have and then follow me. What Jesus is trying to introduce this man to is a word that we've forgotten sometimes in our culture. And it's called generosity. Generosity. That's the first word I want you to know. If y'all ain't going to remember everything, that's cool. But if you remember one thing, if you want to be great, no matter what, no matter where, if you're going from, 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 from elementary school to middle school, going from middle school to high school, high school to college, college to grad school, grad school to your doctorate, doctorate to your, your, your career field, the one word that you want to always keep in mind is generosity. Generosity. You see, greatness is not defined by how much you gain. Greatness is defined by how much you can give. It's what you can give away. It's what you can leave. That's the idea of greatness. You see, we think about greatness in the concept of getting more stuff. That's why when the economy was falling, the one industry that has never fallen is temporary storage. You ever notice that? They still build in temporary storage sites. That's the one place that you don't see their doors close. And if their doors do close, it's because they sold it so they can build another building somewhere else. The temporary storage industry has not declined at all. Because you and I sometimes have a problem of letting go of stuff. We got stuff in temporary storage we ain't seen for years. You ever walk through your storage facility and be like, I got this. I didn't even know this was here. I mean, it's just, it's, we get, we fall in love with stuff. I mean, we got stuff. I mean, I, I can't begin to tell you how much stuff I have bought that I already had in some closet somewhere else. We just don't know how to let go. You ever been through your closet before? I, I tell you, I came home with a shirt. 
I went to I went to Marshall's one time and came home with a shirt that I had already had. Tag still on it. Because we just we've become pack rats, hoarders. That's what we are. And we go through life thinking that that's the way to be great. Yeah, I got like three or four cars in the fifth. I got to do that. I got that car. I got that cars. You can't even drive. It's, it's, it's more of a liability than it is an asset because it's sucking your money away from insurance. It's just it's all types of stuff. We just think that accumulating things is the way to be great. And that was the issue with this man. He couldn't, he couldn't, he, he had seen it to a level of what he thought was greatness on this side of heaven, but he couldn't get to a level of greatness where eternity couldn't take away what he gained. He couldn't get to that level because he couldn't get rid of his stuff. So here's my question for you. When it comes to generosity and it comes to greatness, what's standing in your way? What are you holding on to? You know, every phase in your life, you're going to have an opportunity to be generous because generosity is not just giving a way of money, but generosity may be given away of your time. It may be given away of some type of resource. It may be given away of what you know, your knowledge, your education. It may be taking time out of your schedule to sit down with somebody who doesn't understand algebra as well as you do in your class and being generous enough to help them understand it. I don't know. It, it, it could be just sharing your, 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 your what's it called? Tockets? What's the little, the, the yeah, talkies? Yeah, yeah, I don't even, we just had Doritos. They got, I don't know. But it might be sharing that with your neighbor. It's you got to put yourself in a place to be generous. We got to learn how to operate with generosity. That's going to determine your greatness based on how you give. This is why if I was to ask you, who do you think is great? You could probably list people that are well known and people that do all these things. And then you probably list people who 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 no one knows but you. And the reason why they're great for you because of how generous they were. The fact that your grandmother spent time and, and would give the shirt off her back to make sure that you was covered. The, the fact that the lady down the street always, but always looked out for, for the people on the block. It's, 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 it's when you didn't have the fact that, that your uncle showed up and gave you the little bit that they have. That's why we say they're great. It's because of what they have given. That's what makes us great. So I, you know, I'm new to the human services space. Uh, you know, I've been in ministry for a long time, but you know, sometimes church ministry is a little different than human services space because now I'm serving people who are returning citizens and well, I'm not serving them, but the people that I get to serve, serve them, returning citizens and, 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 and homeless and veterans and seniors and, and all this stuff. But anyway, I had to fly to Seattle from some weeks ago and uh, take a tour of our affiliate there. And in Seattle, Volunteers of America has one of the largest food banks in the state, the state of Washington. It's huge. It's huge. It's, it, I mean, it, it, there's an Amazon fulfillment center that's next to it, this food bank that we have, that the, the Amazon fulfillment center looks like a, a, a corner store and compared to the size of this food bank. It's huge. I've never seen nothing like this in my life. And so I'm going into the food bank and I'm thinking, man, this is going to be like the biggest grocery store I've ever seen in my life. It's going to be food everywhere. So I walk into this food bank and let me tell you something. It was the cleanest place I've ever seen, but the shelves was completely empty. So I'm confused. This is a food bank. The shell, I mean, every, I mean, it was like, it looked like an empty warehouse. So I go to this guy and, 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 and I'm talking and I, you know, like I said, making myself probably look really stupid. And I said, you know, this is huge. This is a nice facility. Where's all the food? This is where's all the food. He says, you know, the food bank, to call us as a food bank is probably a misnomer. Oh my God. Mm. He says, because bank gives the illusion that we just store food. Right. We just hold on to food. He says, but the reason why we're able to build a big facility like this is because we make it our point that everything that comes in in the morning is gone by the evening. Oh. Everything that comes in. I'm talking about this, this facility must be 500,000 square feet and truckloads of stuff come in and not just food, but clothes. I mean, uh, 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 Under Armour sent three 
uh, semi trucks load of clothes packed from the, the ceiling to the floor. And they have teams of people that come in and they get the stuff. They get rid of the stuff because the way that they keep going is not based on how much they can keep, but how, they, how much they can give. Let me tell you something. We have become like many food banks in our mind. And we think that it's all about how much we can keep and how much we can hold on to and how much knowledge we can acquire and how much things we can give. But your greatness in life won't be determined by how much you can gather. It's going to be determined by how much you can give. Wake up every morning full. Go to bed every night empty. Start your day full. Leave your day empty. Generosity. There's a second word that I think we need to learn. So Jesus goes through this passage in Mark chapter 10, and he starts talking about, I'm just going to paraphrase. I need to move because I know we're running low on time. But he, 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 I'm just going to paraphrase really quickly. He, he, he kind of goes through, and he starts talking about his death. He starts talking about his time being near. And he's having a real sentimental moment because they're headed to Jerusalem with his, with his disciples. He wants them to know what's going to happen to him. And at this sentimental moment, you ever, you know, had somebody that just said something at the wrong time? Or everybody's like being real serious. And then all of a sudden someone starts joking and just like, like, where does that come from? But anyway, he's having a sentimental moment. And two of his, his disciples, James and John, I mean, uh, uh, comes to him. These are sons of Zebedee, come to him. Um, and in fact, and if you if you read the same passage in Matthew, it gives us more information because James and John had their mother involved in this as well. And, 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 they, and they come to Jesus and they say, Jesus, look, I know you're about to die and everything. And that's cool. We feel bad for you and all that good stuff. But look, we want to know what is it going to take for us to sit on your right side and your left side? We want to be in charge. We want to rule with you, Jesus. And we, you know, we've been holding it down for you. You know, you, you did your crusades and fed the, had the fish fries and all that stuff when we was dead. We did all that stuff. But in eternity, we want to make sure that we got some status and some title. We want to be on your left and right side. The James and John show. J and J Productions. That's what we're going to do. That's, that's, what, that's, that's what they want to do. And they even got their mom on it because, you know, because their mom probably had a relationship with Jesus' and mom. They probably went to school together or something like that. I'm sorry. So I'm sure they probably said, you know, yeah, I know Mary. So, so Jesus, look, can, can you hook my sons up? <laughs> so Jesus had to break something down to them because they had this thing twisted. That, you know what, if, if you want to be great like that, you got to go through what I'm not getting ready to go through. You got to think that, like Jesus, you know, keep in mind that he didn't see... His title, who he was, something to cling to. The fact that he was God in the flesh. He didn't see that something to cling to. He lowered himself and humbled himself. So the second word that, 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 that I think we got to remember if we're going to achieve greatness is humility. 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 You got to stay humble. You got to stay humble. You got to stay humble. You got to. Stay low. Because the second you think that you have arrived and that you're good and that you know it all and that you've got all the answers is the very second that you will be shown really quickly that you don't know and that you don't have all the answers and that things don't go the way you want it to go just because it's the way you want it to go. You got to stay humble, stay low. I don't care how many titles you get on, on the end of your name or how many titles you get before your name. Stay low. Stay humble. Football can teach us a very valuable lesson because in football, they tell the offensive line, no matter how big you are, you got to stay low. No matter how big you are. And these are some big guys. But they tell them no matter how big you are, you got to stay low. Now, why would you tell a big guy like this to stay low? Because you would think that, that if they stand big and they're big like that, they would scare their opponents off. But staying low gives them leverage. It gives them leverage. Here's the thing you got to understand. Humility gives you leverage. You say, well, well, how does humility give you leverage? Because we've learned to go into places and brag about yourself. Tell about all the things you've done. Tell about all your accomplishments. You ever sit down and talk to somebody, they just keep talking about themselves and talking about themselves? I don't mind. I like hearing people talk. So keep on. Just tell me more about yourself. 
and we would just talk about ourselves and talk about ourselves. I did to you this, I accomplished this, and I did this, and I can't believe this, and all these different things. And we talk and we talk and we talk and we talk and we talk. And the person sitting across from us is thinking, and what? So what? You lose your leverage. Because when you talk about yourself that, that much and all your accomplishments, it begins to communicate to people that you have nothing to learn. Because in your mind, you know it all. I ain't got to listen to nobody. I know it all. What do I go to church for? I know it all. What do I got to go to the council for? I know it all. What do I need to talk to HR for? I know it all. I have all the answers. That's what, that's what we, I, I love what Proverbs 12 and 15 says. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't give this to y'all, but it says fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. This is why you got to be humble. Because once you start thinking that your own way is right, the Bible calls that foolish. You're not great. You're stupid. I say, I'm just telling you what the scripture says. That's what Proverbs 12 and 15 says. It says it's foolish. But when you humble yourself, you leave yourself open to wisdom, open to being taught, open to understand that sometimes things don't happen the way you think they should happen. Sometimes there's things be happening behind the scenes that that you may not even be aware about. And God might be working things out on your behalf behind the scenes. Just when you thought that you had everything right, God might do something totally different, but you may miss it because you got to see it happen the way you think it should happen. I, I was in a grocery store some weeks ago and I acted a complete fool. This is this is and this happened one time before. So I must have learned my lesson yet. But I, I go to one of those self-checkout. Uh, deals. Y'all know, y'all self-checkout things. I mean, now they can switch stores. They don't even do like cash is no more. They just do the self-checkout things now. Somebody want to check out self-checkout things, and I'm in a rush because I'm running late, and I got to be to a meeting, and I got to get to where I need to get to, and so I'm, I'm, I'm like rushing, and I'm rushing, and 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 and, and then you know I got to pick up my kids, and if I don't pick them up, and she's gonna be mad. And it's just it's all this stuff going on, right? It's just this it's just crazy. I'm rushing. I am rushing. And so I'm at the store and I, I, I scan my item and then I put the item in the bag and the thing says to me, please place your item in the bag. And I'm saying, was it in the bag already? And I got to scan two more things, but it won't let me scan the two more things because I just put the item in the bag. So it, it, it's saying, please put your item in and the item's in the bag. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, like where's the, the person that, that works here? So I can get them to come and, 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 and you know, unlock the machine. And so I see them go over and use a little car and swipe at another thing and, because they was having problems too. And I was like, this whole store is having problems. So I stop her and I say, ma'am, it's not letting me do the thing. Can you come and use the swipey card thing and swipe, and swipe, swipe the, the machine so I can go? I got to get out of here. And so this lady looks at me and, and waves me off and goes back to the little podium and she was standing at. And I said, oh, no, she didn't. She must not know who I am. So I'm trying to be calm. I'm saying, I come over to the podium and I say, ma'am. I, I need you. I need you to come swipe your card. I got to get out of here. I'm in a rush. She says, "Go ahead. You good?" And so I'm like, "Ma'am, I'm not good." And I'm just starting to raise my voice. And so now people beside me, they scanning their stuff. And they slowing down because they want to see how this is going in. I said, "I'm not good. I've been here. You, you, all the machines broken. All the machines in here broken. Don't nothing work. I'm trying to get this thing. This thing is telling me that I need to put my my my, my, my thing. The bread in the in the bag. The bread is already in the bag. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm just trying to leave. So people are looking. Manager starting to walk over because I'm you know I'm you know looking angry and upset and I'm in a part of town that they just they don't you know get with us like that. So it's just starting to go bad. So she says, "Sir, you're good." And I said, "No, come. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me come. You come. You walk over me. Bring your little card. Walk over me." So I'm walking her over to the machine, and I go and I say, "See, the machine is not letting me." And I said, "Oh, well." Uh, and the machine had already cleared up. It was waiting for the next item. And so now I put my foot in my mouth. People are like this. Ooh, look at him. He was doing all that on the answer. And I said, I'm so sorry. I'm, 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 I, I don't even know what happened. I'm telling you, it wasn't that. I said, how did you do that? How did you, because you, you didn't come over to talk to She was like, let me show you something. So she brought me back over to the podium. And on, in the podium is all the screens. They operate the little, the little systems. It was all the little screens. So she was able to clear my screen from the podium. And I didn't realize it. <laughs> oh, y'all going to miss it. Y'all going to fail this class. She was working things out on my behalf behind the scenes that I had no clue of. 
she was hitting buttons and pulling things to free me up. But because she didn't come in the way I thought she should come. Because she didn't come in the way that I had analyzed and said you had to do it this way. I almost missed out on my blessing. She was trying to get me out of there on time. But I was still fussing because it wasn't happening the way I thought it should happen. I didn't operate in humility. See, that's what arrogance will do. Arrogance will, t- will tell you that you know it all, that you got it right, that there's nothing else for you to learn, that you didn't got the degree, that you didn't achieve the thing. But humility says there's always something to learn. There's always something. To- you will never know it all. Stay humble. Yeah, I graduated, but it's still more for me to learn. Yeah, 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 I got the job, but it, it, it's still, I got a whole lot of learning to do. They don't hire you because you, you know it all. They hire you because you're willing to learn. You're willing to grow. All right, I give you this last word. I give you this last word. I got to get here. Last word, last word, last word, last word. Verse, verse 43 says this. He tries to teach his disciples this lesson because they, they got it all confused. They think being great means having status and they think being great means sitting on the right and left side and having a, a job and a title and a badge and all that stuff. They, they got it all twisted. So Jesus says to his disciples, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be, verse 43, wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. Here's the last word, service. Service. Generosity, humility, service. If you want to be great, th- th- this is the recipe. Be generous, be humble, and serve. Be generous, be humble, and serve. That's greatness. No matter what's in your, no matter how many commas in your bank account, don't matter. No matter how many houses or properties you have, don't matter. How many cars you have, don't matter. How much clothes you have, don't matter. All that stuff is nice. But if you want to be great in God's economy, which is an economy that doesn't get destroyed with this earth, if you want to be great, just be generous, be humble, and serve. You say, okay, well, what do you mean by, by serve? That means use your gifts and your talents and your treasures or, or whatever it is, and don't look for nothing in return. Just give. Just be willing to show up and give your best. Serve. You see someone that needs a help? Don't call somebody. Help up and serve them. Help them to the best of your ability. Now, if helping them means calling somebody and call somebody, but don't just say, well, somebody else got to have to do that. Serve. We've got out of that. I, I just don't know what's happened now. Like now, we don't serve. We pull out our phones so we can record. I mean, like, people need help. And we're like, why do we got everything on, 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 on camera? Somebody ain't doing something. Serve. Do something. I saw this video. This lady was getting attacked by a wild turkey. Not, not too far from here. It was, it was D.C. And the guy was standing by with his recording. He was like, this is wild. Do you see this turkey attacking this lady? And the lady says, can you help me? He said, oh, yeah, my fault, my fault. Like, sir. Don't let the first thing you do is capture the moment so you can have something to post. Serve. Be a part of it. That's what we've been called to do, is to serve. Serve, serve, serve. You know, so, let me, I gotta close. So, my, my, um, <laughs> my grandmother, uh, I grew up, I grew up with my mom and, and grandma. We grew up at First Baptist Church of Highland Park in the James J. McCord era. So, we, you know, so my, so my grandmother's always, I've always known her to serve. She's always done something. Like back in the day, we used to have like the paper bulletins. You remember we used to do that? And, they, and she would go up on Saturdays and fold the bulletins, fold them. 
And then the church got, got a little bit of money and they got a folding machine. And she had to go in and put the bullets in the folding machine and fold them in. My grandma just always did this. Then she got up in her age and she was, she was in her 90s. And my aunt used to go to the church and they had a, what's called a track ministry. Y'all remember tracks? Like you had a gospel message and tracks. We don't do that type of stuff no more. But I know they, we had tracks. And so there was this little cart in the, in, the, in, the, in the lobby where you put the tracks at. And so my grandmother would, she would, they would order the tracks and she would take a stamp, an ink stamp, and stamp the church's address on the back of the track. So that when people gave the, the tracks out, they could know a church they can, you know, might want to connect with. So anyway, uh, uh, I remember when I was a kid, so my grandmother did this all her life. But when I was a kid, my grandmother used to be doing different things for the church. And she'd be singing the song. She'd be humming it. And it used to annoy me a little bit because my grandma wasn't that type of person. She would be singing the song that said, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. She says, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promise him that I, promise him that I will serve him till I die. I'm on the, y'all grandma must have sang the song too. All right, all right. So she was singing. It's always to be like, grandmother, you ain't never gotten to fight a day in your life. What battle are you in? She seems like I'm on the bathroom for my lawyer. Problems and I serve him till I die. Anyway, zoom forward in around 2007, my grandmother had a stroke. And it just changed. It, I mean, it was, it was, she didn't die at that moment, but it was massive. I mean, it was, her quality of life just severely dropped after that. And she lived a few more years. But she ended up dying. She didn't live until she was 98 years old. So that was a blessing. But um, she had the stroke around the time she was 92. So I get to the hospital and, and I know that this is, I can just see her and I say, this is, this is going to change everything. This is where, this is where it starts to go down. So I asked my aunt who she, she was living with, what was she doing when she had the stroke? She says, I don't know. All I know is she was sitting at the table stamping her tracks. And I remember that song, I promised him that I, till I die. That's greatness. That's greatness. No one would know Lucille Franklin's name, but that's that's greatness. That's greatness. When you will give of yourself to the point of death for the sake of the cross, for the sake of the one who gave his life for you. That's greatness. But our society and culture has let this world get in the way of that type of shining. And I pray that whatever is next for you, middle school, high school, elementary school, whatever is next, that you will never forget that if you want to be great, you got to be generous, you got to be humble, you got to serve. You got to serve. And don't let nothing get in the way of that.